Welcome back to the channel with Paradox the Rapper. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for all of this interesting stuff. If you're new to the channel, this car was all neochrome and now it's peeled again and back to its shitbox form. <laughs> A lot of times, 240s are gonna look like this when you buy them from anywhere. So, um, you know, it's, it's drift car life. You have mismatching panels, you have mismatching uh, colors, just bad paint overall. If you're interested in seeing what this car looked like before, go here or here somewhere, and you can see what it looked like in the full neochrome that was the fender. So I just have the fender left on this side, some more stuff on that side, and the gas cap right there. And then it's done being peeled. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about the peeling process and how it works. Um, it's pretty simple, really. All you gotta do is get it hot, pull it off. That's the great thing about wrap. Um, but the paint under it is not great. Well, of course it's not great, it's terrible. <laughs> but the wrap also pulled off some primer as well. So on this episode, I'm gonna show you how to properly prep your car if it looks something like this for me to be able to wrap it. A lot of people have been asking me this question as to how much do I need to sand it? Um, what kind of grit sandpaper do I need to do? How smooth does it need to be? Do I need a wet sand or can I just do it and wrap it? Do I need to primer it? Do I need to seal up um, bare metal? So we'll answer all those questions here so that if anyone's asking me what I need to do to uh, get this car ready for wrap, I'm gonna link you to this video. So stay tuned. We're gonna be peeling the 240. So say goodbye to this color. I know some of you guys like this color, but you, you see that right there? Look at that. <laughs> that right there annoys the shit out of me because just the way this color is built, when the panels are not like perfectly flush with each other, like on the 240s, you can really see where I stretched it. And just looking at it from the side, yeah, that orange kind of striping thing, really don't like it. And I don't like stuff like this. Look, 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 look at that. Look what you gotta do with this stuff because you you really have to seam it like on the curves and it's not very nice. It's nice to look at from like, you know, 10 feet away, five feet away, but up close, it does not hold up to inspection at all. bit of a different scenery for you guys today um it's bring your car to work and peel it day <laughs> it's nicer to peel a car when it's hot outside um so you don't have to use the heat gun so it's nice and whew, the sun's out it's a beautiful warm day down in downtown sacramento and um yeah i'm on my lunch and i'm just gonna continue peeling this thing so um this material is a little bit harder to peel than regular stuff i believe just because it kind of just breaks apart very easily. But as you can see, when it's nice and hot outside, you can just peel that. Just take a little corner, uh, way back here somewhere. And then you just lift it up and peel it. So of course, there you go. Yeah, see it kind of breaks apart. So that normally wrap would usually, when it's warm, peel in one piece but this just has a tendency to just rip off more.
just a little update on what's going on in the yard. Um, Hellcat is in for some work. So we'll do that in another episode. That's running fine. That's running fine. That has a check engine light. Red MR2 is not here because um, it's not passing smog and it's idling a little high. So it's at the shop right now for them to get it right. Here, the wheels. Okay, so I have my wheels um, packaged up and this is gonna be ready to go. I have someone doing a, um, a semi-sponsor to hook my wheels up with fatter lips. Um, those are three inch lips back there on these guys. And I'm going for four inch lips on these guys. It would make this a 10 and a half. It will make that, that's, gonna, that's a nine and a half right now. So this, once I put the um, four inch lips on, it'll be a 10 and a half. Perfect for the VR4. And here, these guys have been broken apart. Oh, well, not broken apart, but the tires off of them. So you can see that these are true three piece because this is a rubber gasket. And this is, let me know if this is a step lip. I think it is. Um, this is a step lip. And um, what I'm gonna try to do is probably flip the face like Christian did. And then flip these around so that it faces the other way. You undo all these bolts back here, clean all this up, polish that, and now you have a fat deep dish, okay? More on that later when we do that episode. But here, what you have is a, um, these quarter panels that came with the car, the quality of them are not that good, you see that? That's a hole in the stuff. So I'm gonna fill up these holes um, I'm going to sand all this down and then re, uh, I don't think I need a reprimer, but I, if I do, I will. Here, my previous primer work is fine, but I circled this because there's a, actually an indent right here that I'm going to fill up. And then all this needs to be sanded down again. Got to finish peeling that. Okay, and then my roof, I peeled off the carbon fiber wrap because it was looking trash. Oh yeah, I got a new... A new roof spoiler this was cheap off of ebay um i think it was like 60 bucks 100 dollars, something like that but this is peeling right here the wrap took off whatever gnarly paint that was on here before i kept this black part <laughs> yikes this is looking rough okay so i can't wait to put the new color on but before we do that we're gonna get this right um, if you guys are bringing me your car and I'm saying you need to prep the car, otherwise I'll charge you more money for it. This is what you want to do. This is at Home Depot in the power tool section. It's called Diablo Sand Net. It's very nice for sanding because there's a, it's a net you can see through it. And it doesn't really gum up as badly as regular sanding stuff. You see how that gets gummed up there? You can technically just wash this out and then keep reusing it until the net is no longer rough. Um, you get one of these things from Harbor Freight. So that's like um, probably 18 bucks, $15. And this is like 20 something. Okay, that's all you need. And um, you want to get the, this one's a little rougher grit. This one's like, uh, yeah, this is 80 grit. Ugh. So that's for really rough stuff. And then you want the, um, the 120 or the 220 then you can sand all this down and it'd be super smooth as long as it feels smooth then you're ready for wrap so i'm going to finish peeling and then i'm going to show you what it looks like after sanding but you can see right here you see that difference in the paint so this is where i kind of sprayed some black um just to cover up the primer when i'm wrapping it and you can see how the um the wrap has lifted where i rattle canned it so if you have a rattle can paint job that's not done properly this will happen anytime you see any of this it will show up in the next wrap so you want to make sure that you sand all this down all right so let's get to sanding look at that look at all that stuff <laughs> okay so um this is all ready to go for the new wrap 
um, let's go have a closer look, see what's going on. So this whole side is pretty much done. It's starting to get dark and the mosquitoes are coming out. So I'm just gonna show you this side, but basically you repeat this for the whole car. Um, right here, you can see how smooth this fender is. It was smooth from before, I had no issues with it. So when I took the wrap off, it's just fine. You can see right here how it's like rusting a little bit because this is where it rubs and the wrap's not covering it. So ideally what you want to do is primer any exposed metal so it doesn't rust like that. Um, if the wrap is covering it, then you're fine. So I think I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna pull these fenders a little bit. Um, we'll see how it goes. I'm probably sanding all this rust away. Pull this a little bit. And I need to run skinnier tires on here anyhow, okay? Um, over here, all this has been nice and sanded. You can't feel a difference in any of this. If you don't have wrap to test whether or not this is good, get a piece of masking tape. Um, put masking tape over any parts that are questionable, like this, right here. And if you see a difference in the masking tape, then it needs more sanding. Once you don't see a difference in the masking tape, you're good to go. Back here, where you have peeling, um, where you have peeling parts and stuff like that, um, whoever put this stuff on was didn't do a very good job because this is what peeled off rather than this portion. So this looks rough, but when you get up real close, even though there's some some pitting you won't feel a difference in the wrap once you put this on so this is all really smooth if you want to and be really picky you can hit this with another coat of primer and then wet sand the primer and then you'd be super good um but down here this is fine i didn't have any issues with it down here so i just sanded it smooth this looks like a difference but it's not okay and stuff like this where the fiberglass is cracking you want to hit it with some more bondo or glazing putty. You can probably find glazing putty online. Um, once that's spilled in, you sand it again, hit it with some primer, and then you're good to go after you sand the primer. Um, down here, this side skirt, um, this looks really rough, but it's pretty smooth. Well, right here it's not, see? That needs more work. In here it needs more work, but the rest of it is really good okay so that's what you want to do if it's good for you then it's good to get it wrapped um if you want me to do this this does take a whole lot more time and effort look at this <laughs> um yeah i'll be charging you extra if you make me do this um but ideally you want a body shop to do it otherwise it won't ever be perfect um you can do it yourself too um, but just understand that if anyone other than a professional body shop is doing it, it might not be perfect. So if you're okay with that, we can party. Okay, right here, I sanded down all the stuff. Ooh, I still feel a little bit of a difference right here. So I'll hit that again. Um, it, this material is a little rougher on top. So I hit it with the 60 grit very lightly. Then I went with the 120 on the orbital and it's good to go. Yeah, I think it's 150 or something like that. All right, that's it, done. Now to finish the other side of the car tomorrow and um, just give this bumper another once over with the sander and I'm ready for the new wrap. So stay tuned for that. What the hell is this cat doing? Seriously, get off of there. This cat's crazy. She hunts rats and stuff like that. Once in a while, you'll just find a rat's head just chilling on the ground. Go on. Get off the roof. Go. Get out of here. Crazy ass animal. I think she's camping the uh, hummingbirds. We gotta move this thing. I don't know how many hummingbirds she's killed. I hope none. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode and you found it useful. I'm super dirty, but that's basically 
how you want to sand your car. So make sure you sand it really good before it gets wrapped. When you bring it to me, it needs to be super smooth. And then wrap some masking tape over your hand. Touch where you've sanded so that no residual paint or primer and stuff like that comes off on the masking tape and you're good to go. If it does, sand it again. If you found this useful, let me know in the comments. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And I'll catch you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.